All right, so I've done uh, two burns already on my 55 gallon drum, which is gonna become a smoker. Here's the inside after two burns. So you can see it's pretty, got a lot of carbon on there and stuff. So what we're gonna do is get some sandpaper and uh, a, um, I don't know, sander. I'm gonna use a uh, orbital sander. Try to take this out real clean and then uh, do the same on the exterior of the whole thing and then start getting ready to make my holes. I'm going to put four 7 8 inch holes around this. Um, 7 8 of an inch so that way a 3 quarter inch uh, black pipe nipple can fit in there and then uh, I'll have to clean the bottom of this thing up a little bit and then um, start getting ready to put in holes for my grates and stuff. We'll take a look at all those measurements shortly but the first thing I want to do is get sanded and uh, make sure my metal isn't too thin any place so that it's falling through otherwise I'll have to repair all that. Okay so I'm using um, I've gone over this thing pretty well I'm using a combination of between uh, 60 and 80 grit uh, sandpaper 60s and 80s and then uh, if I have to clean anything up real well, I'll probably go with like a 120 or something like that. It's all for my disc sander, my orbitable, 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 orbital, blah, blah, blah. I can't speak correctly, I'm sorry. Um, orbital sander, and then I'm cleaning it all up with some lacquer thinner. It's got a real quick flash time on it, and um, as you can see, well maybe you can, it's getting pretty clean in there now. So we're actually inside of my smoker right now. You can see where I have to do yet. None of that was sanded. And out here all has been. So we're getting there. All right, so um, I'm pretty much done sanding the inside of this thing. Got a little bit left in these corners. So I don't know if you can see that. Uh, right inside where the side walls meet the bottom. Um, otherwise, we're doing pretty well so far. The inside walls have been uh, sanded real well and wiped down. It's starting to come pretty clean. My hands are filthy anyways, but uh, I wiped them all down with mineral spirits. I'm not going to paint in here. I am, however, going to throw some uh, maybe vegetable oil, vegetable oil or some cooking spray. I'll wipe down the inside so that I uh, protect it from rusting. And now I got to start sanding on the outside and then um, get ready to start making my holes. This one was done earlier with a universal bit that went to three quarter. Well, that's three quarter outer diameter, doesn't fit for one of those three quarter inch nipples. So um, I'm going to balance that out. That was way early in this whole project. I drilled one because I thought it would help. I know it did help uh, get air to circulate inside the pit, I mean inside the uh, drum, so I could do my burnout. All the paint came off the sides, outside, and whatever was inside got burned out, so nice and clean in there now. Not really worried about anything in there. Um, you are going to get quite dirty though, leaning inside there, so be aware of that. You might want to do this outside instead of in a shop or in your basement or something, because I mean I am just caked in uh, dirt and dust and junk and you name it. Definitely wear a mask, some air protection while you're in there sanding. Okay, so uh, most of the outside is stripped down. Um, I'm just, you know, rubbing over stuff and making sure that it feels smooth and that I don't have ample amounts of paint stuck anywhere. There's a little bit of, almost looks like orange peel on here. Let's see if I can sand that off better. Um, and then I'm going to start taping out from here to here. It's going to be one color and then the main field will be a different color. Um, I'm down to, uh, well I started off at sit between 60 and 80 grit, uh, whatever I kind of grabbed because I had both of those sitting around. And then I ran to uh, 150 grit which seemed to work really well um, around this area here. And, uh, and then just to clean stuff up and to smooth things down. I'm at that point there. Um, like I said, I'm using an orbitable, oh, I can't say that word this whole video, uh, orbital sander. Uh, the weird thing is my hands are real kind of numb now from doing that, even if I 
do this, it feels like, I don't know, really weird. Um, I should probably take it easy for a couple minutes. Uh, so I'm going to sand down a little bit more, smooth this stuff out, make sure I have all the rust off. I'm stopping once in a while and I'm using some uh, mineral spirits to uh, get the rust off, wipe everything down, get the dust off so I can feel and see what I'm doing better. Um, and then also clean out the metal pores of um, rust and debris or dirt. And that way, obviously, my, my paint will adhere better. I'm going to use high temperature paint. I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, I'm sanded on the outside and the inside. I'm going to start my paint now. Um, I'm going to have multiple paints, so I'm going to tape off. Like I said, it's going to be on the ridges. Tape that all off. Uh, this happens to be, and sorry if you're not a fan, but I don't care. Uh, green, gold, green, gold, green, gold. And the lid will probably be gold with a... Uh, emblem from a certain football team on here um, that's where I'm at one thing I've definitely come to the conclusion of though uh, if I ever build another one of these maybe for a friend or if I find that I can do maybe a little bit better job by tweaking some stuff uh, next drum smoker build is definitely gonna get sandblasted the amount of time and uh, the amount of money that I put into uh, sanding discs for this project um, would make sand blasting or soda blasting bead blasting whatever have it blasted clean would definitely be a better option okay I'm all taped out ah well that's a ding in the thingamabob but we'll hide that later um, gonna start painting now I retaped because I didn't like the way it looked with the other one um, did a better taping job last was real kind of haphazard so this was actually thought out and uh, pulled real tight and looks pretty good so I measured the diameter of my drum which comes to about six feet and I'm going to divide that by I want to put four holes into the bottom so I'm going to go every 18 inches um, so I will come around and we'll look at 18 Gives me one and a half feet. And I'll just put a little hack mark every 18th inch. And then we'll measure up uh, two and a half inches. And then we will drill a seven eighths inch uh, hole. So that way, a three quarter inch. Um, gas pipe or uh, black uh, three-quarter inch pipe nipple will fit there and that'll be the uh, outer diameter because the outer diameter of a three-eighths pipe nipple three-quarter inch pipe nipple is going to be seven-eighths all right so you saw <coughs> excuse me uh, every 18th inch around and now two and a half inches up so, this is the mark that I'm going all the way around my diameter every 18th inch. That's two and a half up, so where those intersect will be the uh, center for my drill bit. So now I'm drilling out the holes that the uh, bolts will go in. That one's tight. Um, Got to bore that out a little bit. Drilling the holes that the bolts will go in, that if you see inside there, the uh, grill grate, the rack, is going to rest on that. I'm going to put in a second one, too. This happens to be, uh, well, you can see my drum might be different than some of yours. Uh, this was actually a DOT chemical drum that never got really used for anything. But I got one, two, three ribs. Um, you might not have that many, so that's going to kind of make a difference as to where my first shelf goes compared to yours or... Yours will be different from the next guy's, will be different yet from somebody else's. Um, so you're just gonna have to determine uh, wherever you might like your first shelf to be. I'm putting mine down below that first rib, uh, run right uh, rib right here, because if I put it above, by the time I get my lid on, which is a flat lid, it's not a dome lid, um, and this 
grill. I don't think lends itself, I checked, didn't lend itself to putting a Weber kettle over top of it easily, so I might modify that later on. But uh, for right now, I'm putting my first bolt four inches down, and then I might put another one just above this second rib, so I got a couple inches in between there. Um, the way I laid that out was I just clamped a level to the bucket so I ran it so I know for a fact that I'm perpendicular to the uh, that I'm straight in line with the uh, exhaust hulse that's more for aesthetics than anything else okay so the green paint is done you can see where the uh, ribs are silver uh, this one should be but it originally was going to do something different with the paint so that got one paint of one coat of green that's going to go away um, those will be uh, gold. So um, the paint is almost done. <clears throat> and I have the intake valves on. I'm going to show you inside where they are poking through. I can get a, maybe a tack welder. I bought some, I got some JB weld I'm going to use in there. That stuff's good up to 700 degrees. Hopefully, I won't be over 700 degrees with anything. That would be really 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 hot uh, and then here's how the uh, pipe nipples will stand on the outside now one problem I did have was with the uh, hole that I tapped out it was uh, 7 eighths and I probably should have really escalated that to one inch um, I wanted it to be tight but that was ridiculously tight um, I don't know this, you'll find that these nipples, these are uh, close, three quarter inch close, um, <clears throat> are tapered. I thought it would go in a little bit easier than it did. It took a little bit of, a little bit of work. I had to use a file and, and just touch up the outside, um, the inside of the hole actually. And then I was able to uh, just tap these in. If you have troubles, what you might want to do is put a, a cap on your pipe nipple there. <clears throat> And, uh, and then what you would do is you'd be able to pound on it with that without damaging any of the handles. Now, this is what I'll, I'll take off for airflow, and that'll open everything up in there. And that'll go right through into the smoker and let air into there. So that's where we will be at. You're good to go with that. Um, there's an elbow over here on this one. That's going to be for... Uh, upward uh, pipe coming upwards and then I'll put a, a valve on to it. I'm going to show you what's going on here shortly after the yellow paint is on. All right so we got the paint on um, for the uh, ribs there and the base everything's all squared away. Now I have to look at putting on a thermometer which I have here. Um, I've selected the face part of the drum which is going to be the part you'll see forward all the time. <clears throat> By that, I mean I've checked, you know, for dings and dents and stuff like that, and I found this to be the best looking area. So, um, I have, you can see here maybe, uh, right there is going to be one of the bolts for my top rack, and right there is going to be another one for this uh, top rack. You can see in there where all the holes and stuff are going to go. I would like for my thermometer to be between halfway between here and here so I'm going to measure all that out and then I'm going to leave it relatively high so that uh, I can put something underneath it. All right so I installed the thermometer um, that's on you can see one thing it's not what you would call um, I don't know it's perpendicular I guess but that's because 300 would be the maximum temperature 350 at the very outside for me. So I put the 300 up here um, Knowing that if I ever see my needle hit what would be 12 o'clock um, I'm starting to really get myself concerned with temperatures. So now that the thermometers on it's time to start mounting my hardware for uh, The screws that are going to hold the racks on this would be um, stainless steel Hardware Making sure I don't have galvanized or zinc because it's foodstuffs um, you can see where the screws are standing out. This was what my grates are going to stand on. Um, I can't really get them level, but that's just fine. I'm not even going to go for a huge hassle. I don't think that the grates are going to be all that 
far out of kilter so we'll see oh you can see on the inside there is where my thermometer probe comes through so I'm gonna get those mounted and then we'll see how the uh, grate goes on and then it's time to start putting all the uh, caps on for my intakes and then uh, one stack up here with a valve and I'll show you that too all right so it's just the last couple touches here um, lid is on but it needs a handle so I'll figure that out I'm just gonna use um, a garage door handle and I'll just you know put a screw here and maybe here whatever it is I don't know put a garage uh, door handle right there um, the this is two inch uh, hole right here I happen to have some uh, aluminum rolled aluminum uh, for flashing I'm just gonna roll that tight into kind of like a toilet paper tube sort of thing and just stick it in there for now uh, eventually maybe get a muffler a piece of muffler or something that can go up thread it into there but we'll see what happens I gotta mess around with uh, the flow rate of the smoke and things like that anyway so I'm gonna check that out um, I can always open up this little tiny hole if I want to this right here um, a lot of guys are using a valve so that um, they can adjust one of them one of the intakes about halfway um, if you look at mine you'll say hey that's not straight up and down that's angled dude you're a disaster but um, the way that I had laid out all my uh, holders and my bolts for my grill grates I well I guess I could leave it up like this but um, in the interest of being able to get at that stuff I'm gonna tilt it back just a tiny bit and then I'm gonna take this set up here it's a piece of 3 8 inch threaded rod um, and then on the end of it is what's called a split ring hanger so um, you just they just thread together and this will go on the outside of my pipe here um, it'll be you know one like that um, and then the threaded rod will go into the barrel here and um, I'll bolt it on from the inside all right, so um, there it is. My answer to the uh, 55 gallon drum vertical smoker. Um, they call it an ugly drum smoker in some circles. I think it's not too bad. Um, I guess if we're ugly, it'll be blue and orange or maybe purple. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, one thing I did find this is a little plug, so I know I don't need it, but. Um, when I'm storing this thing that way no dust gets into it that happened to be believe it or not just in my garage I have no idea why it was there um, the only other thing I have to do really is get a new uh, smokestack because that's just rolled aluminum like I said although the advantage of that is um, if I get a real drafty day I can um, pull up on this inside here it takes two hands um, I could pull up on this and it would you know be uh, kind of a cone it would it, I could extend it up so that's kind of a neat idea um, otherwise uh, to adjust for air intakes these will come off and go back on when I want to close them up we're good to go for that um, my valve for opening and closing to dampen off stuff we're good to go for that um, like I said I can open up another smokestack here uh, that's there let me see if I can extend it yeah see so you can extend it or collapse it uh, I don't think I'll keep it that way but whatever good to go for now um, I need a handle on it still otherwise um, there's the lid I borrowed that from my grill I'll have to put one back or go buy a new one whatever we're good to go that is the 55 gallon drum next thing you're gonna see me do is the uh, charcoal basket for inside of it and that'll be a different video